All right, so for long division today, we're going to talk about two different things. You've got 10 questions that are going to be nice and quick and easy. Then you've got 10 questions that are a little bit more challenging and got to do with long division. So I'm just going to help you with the first 10 questions first. So I've just got two examples here, 12 divided by 4 and 18 divided by 3. Now, if you don't know them off the top of your head, think of multiplication, all right? Division is the opposite to multiplication. So these examples suggest that 3 times something equals 18. And that something is that. All right? And the same is 12 divided by 4. It is 4 times something, which equals 12. And that box is that one. All right? So that's how easy that one is. Okay, look at the multiplication chart, look at the three times table and the answer or the quotient that's 18, whatever's three times this, it'll equal 18. All right, that's what those divided by means. A nice and quick reverse operation from your multiplication sums. All right, so that's the first lot of division tasks. The second lot of division tasks aren't going to be automatically out of your multiplication chart. Okay, You're going to have to think about the answers, which means you're going to have to do a long division equation to get the answer. All right, so they're written like this. This is how you would write them in your book. So question one. Then you're going to change it. So then it's going to look like this. All right, this means divided by. All right, it means seven. How many sevens go into the number 98? All right, and we need to work that out. We're going to work it out two different ways. All right, I'm going to write it over here as well. All right, I'm going to do this way, which is a long division. And this is the shorthand long division that I use all the time. But this is good to know going where your numbers go from. If this one's easier, that's fine. But I'm going to show you both ways. So. For instance, the first one, this is what the video shows you. So 7 into 98. The first thing you do, you're working your way this way across. All right? So the first thing you do is how many 7s go into the number 9? Okay, I know it's 90. How many 7s go into the number 9? All right? 1. One group of 7 goes into 9. Okay, because if I did 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I coloured in seven, I've only got one group, okay? So I'm going to put one up there. So it's it's in tens, basically talking how many seven go into 90, which is 10. And then I know that seven times one is seven, so I put it down there. This is your minus, all right? So now nine minus seven is two, because this is how much we had left over after we couldn't group them anymore, all right? Because I can't go up to 14 because that's too many, all right? For instance, so 7 times 1 is 7, but 7 times 2 is 14. So it's in between, okay? It's 1, but you can't go over, all right? So, and then what you do, you drop down that 8, and then I'm left with 28. So you do the same thing. 7 into 28, I know my 7 times table, so it's 4, all right? And then 7 times 4 is 28, and left, then you're left with 0, okay? Multiplication, if you don't know your multiplication, division is going to be more challenging for you. That's why we do a lot with times tables, all right? So on this side, I hope you can see with the glare of the sun, sorry, so that's a 7. So, I wonder if I just, oh, that's better. All right, 7 into 98. So my shorthand version, what I do, is 7 goes into 9 how many times? One time. And then how many do I have left over to get to 9? So I go 7, 8, 9. So I have 2 left over. So then I kind of carry the 2 over here. Then it becomes 7 into 28, which is 4. All these sums today have no remainders, so you'll have none left over, okay? They're all evenly 
grouped in those. So 98, you can split it up evenly into seven groups. Okay. So what I did was seven into nine only goes once. All right. Then I times it. So one times seven is seven. Then I subtracted it to get two left over. Drop down the eight. So I have 28 left over. All right. I know that seven times four is 28. So I put the four up there, put the 28 down here, took it away, and I'm left with zero. Okay. This one, I did exactly the same thing. I just didn't write it down the page. So I did seven. How many sevens go into nine? Which is one and two left over. Because if you think about it, you had seven. Seven, if I can use seven on my hand. Seven, and I have two left over to make nine. Okay, so I put it there, and then I go 28. So seven into 28 is four. I'm going to do another one for you. All right, so my next one is 96 divided by four. All right, so this is what you're doing in your math book. Okay, you're not just writing 96 divided by four equals that number. I need you to show me the workings out. They are really, really, really important. Okay, so doing this nice and slowly. So I've got 96. I, I've con I can split it evenly into four groups. I need to work out how many do I put into four groups. I do not go one, two, three, four. No, don't do that. Okay, that's what preps at grade ones do. Okay, we're grade five, six. No. So four goes into nine. All right, how many times does four go into 90? Okay, count it up. So you've got four times two is eight. Four times three is 12. Okay, you can't go over. Has to be under. So this one, how many times did it go in? Two. And how much do I have left over? I have one left over. So now I'm going to multiply it. Okay, so four times two is eight. This is how I get how much left over. All right, this is how I know what the next one I have to do. So nine minus eight is one. I pull down the six. So now it's four divided by 16. Okay. I know that four goes into 16 four times, so I carry the four. Then I do four times four is 16, minus them, I get zero. All right, so you go the first, work out what it is, put it there, and how much is left over, and then that's when you divide it by again. Okay, I'll do it over this side. This is the side I like, but you can do this. This helps you more. This is what I'd prefer. So if you can do both, that's really good. But this is what you should do, okay? I will let you do this one. However, you need to know, understand what you're doing. So four into nine is two, one left over. Four into 16 is four. This might make more sense to you, which is fine. But you need, if I ask you a question, you need to be able to tell me what you did. What's that number come from? Okay, it's the same. So the 16 over here, 16 there. So 4 goes into 9 twice with 1 left over. 4 goes into 16 four times. Okay, division means how many times does this number, if you divide it into four groups, how many is in each group? So there's 24 in each group. All right, I'm going to do a couple more. I'm going to do three digit one so you can see how far this can go down okay all right i've given you two sums this time we're only going to work with three digits today and tomorrow but it's the same thing for if you had a four digit or five digit okay so the first thing that's written in your book then you change it to this okay you're writing it like this and then changing it so you know that they equal the same thing, okay? That you know you can change that into this sum. So the first thing you do, you're working that way across, okay? So four goes into one, you can't do, okay? Four cannot be, one cannot be divided into four groups, 
Okay, it's a single number. So then you use these two numbers. Okay, then you use the hundreds and the tens. So 4 goes into 12 three times. I can split four groups of 12 and I'll have three in each group. So the answer is 3. Then I multiply it to see how much I've got left over. So 4 times 3 is 12. I've got none left over. So I bring down the 8. Now it's 4. How many 4s go into 8? So how many? I can split that up into 4 groups, but how many is in each group? All right, I know that 4 times 2 is 8. So the 2, 2 times 4 is 8. Zero remainder. All right, short version. Work your way across. Start at the 12, 1, work your way across. So 4 goes into 1, you can't do. But then you're using the 12. So 4 goes into 12 three times. Now they go evenly. And then you go 4 goes into 8 twice. Okay? This one, 256 divided by 4. So I'm going to do, going to change it like that. So 4 goes into 2, can't do, okay? Because 2 is a smaller number, so you can't split it into 4 groups. We're not using decimals, we're using whole numbers. So then you use that 25, okay? So 4 goes into 25, doesn't go into 25. Okay, so I've got to work out what's the closest number does without going over. I know that 4 times 6 is 24. Okay, that's the closest number without going over. So I know that this is going to be 6. So 4 times 6 is 24. Minus that, I'm going to have 1 left over. Okay, I drop down the 6. So now it's 4 goes into 16. And that is 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. Subtract that and the answer I get is 0. So I can split 256 into 4 groups and each group will have 64 numbers, 64 objects. Alright, so the shorter version. Four goes into two, you can't do. Four goes into twenty-five four times. No, six times, sorry. And one left over. All right, four into 16 is four. Okay, so that's two different types. All right, so that's the task today. If you, I would want you to do both of these answers, okay, if possible. You have 10. Try and finish all 10 sums. So all together you'll have 20 sums to do. Okay, I know it's asking a lot. But the first 10 questions are nice and quick. It's multiplication, opposite to multiplication. This one's more challenging. But once you get it, you need to practice. Okay, it's really important. If you don't, if you don't understand, don't do me, message me. I'm happy to help. Okay, or explain it to you again. But watch this video and watch the other video that's attached to it and you should be okay. Okay, just watch it over and over again until you understand. Okay, I do not mind.